Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about another recurrent neural network derivation, namely the gate recurrent unit or GRU for short. This is a brief overview of the gated recurrent unit. It is quite similar to the long short term memory cell, but it has some differences. We'll see further in the video what are exactly those differences. And if you didn't check the LSTM video, uh, the link is in the description and make sure to see that one first because it also explains how the recurrent neural networks work and we'll not go into these details in this video again. Okay, so let's begin. So here on the left we have the general design of the gated recurrent unit and how it looks like inside it and what are its operation. Uh, the symbols here are mostly like the same as in the LSTM unit. Here we have the Sigma, which basically stands out for like a neural network with a sigmoid activation function. Here we have phi, which is like a neural network with a tanage activation function. Here we have the addition of two uh, vectors. And here we have like the element wise multiplication. What is different, however, is this operation here, one minus, but uh, this one is pretty simple. It does what it looks like. So basically it takes its input a vector and what it does, it outputs one minus that vector, which it takes as input. And here on the right, we have the equations that characterize the gated recurrent unit and we'll go to each of them and see how they process the input and help to transfer the hidden state from one step to another. So the gate recurrent unit also has gates. It has two gates in comparison with the three gates found in the long short term memory cell. And the first gate is the reset gate, which is pretty similar to the forget gate in LSTMs. And what does the reset gaze do? Uh, it takes as input the representation of the current step, the previous hidden state, multiply each of them with a corresponding weight matrix, add a bias, and apply the sigmoid activation function, and save this in the value of RT, which is like the reset value for the current step. And uh, what you do with this value you multiply it element-wise with the previous hidden state. Here, this one is the element-wise multiplication. And you can see that this is quite similar, as we said earlier, to the forget gate in the long short-term memory cell. The next thing that the Jerry computes is the candidate hidden state. And how you can see this one is basically like uh, saying that what is like the new hidden state at the current step that I have like to give further away given the new information that I've got at this step. And this one is like pretty similar to the cell state CT of the current step computed in long short term memory cells. And how the candidate hidden state is computed is computed using a XT multiply by weight matrix and also using the previous hidden state element wise multiplied by the reset gate we discussed previously about this operation and multiplied again by uh, another uh, weight matrix adding a bias applying the 10h function which here we represent again as in the LSTM with phi and finally we obtain the new candidate hidden state h tilde t and this operation is illustrated here with the symbol phi and finally we have the abi date which i have to say that is this at the core of the gated recurrent unit uh, and i know that i left this one at the last step to be explained but we had to understand the previous operations in order to understand this one and what this gate do, it basically selects what to transfer from the previous hidden state and what to transfer from the current candidate hidden state to the next step. 
and we can see this mechanism also in the equations. So we first compute the ZT here, which basically is the value of the update gate using the XT multiplied by weight matrix and also using the previous hidden state multiplied by another weight matrix, adding a bias and to everything we applied the sigmoid function. And what we get again are values between 0 and 1. And uh, we can use these values basically uh, to compute the next hidden state as follows. So we multiply the ZT element wise with the candidate function, candidate hidden state. And also we multiply the opposite of like, I don't know, the mirroring of the values in the update date, computing using one minus uh, ZT. And we multiply these values with the value of the previous hidden state. And in this way, we, as we said earlier, we select what's important from the previous hidden state and what's important from the current candidate hidden state and transfer everything to the next step as the hidden state. And this mechanism can also be observed in this diagram here. So basically here where we have this sigma, we compute the ZT. We take this value and we multiply it with what output with output from the phi symbol, which is the candidate H tilde T. We multiply them element wise. So here we have ZT uh, multiplied element wise with H tilde T. And on the other side, when we select what we want from the previous hidden state. Uh, here we compute the 1 minus ZT, okay? We multiply it with the previous hidden state, as we discussed, HT minus 1, element-wise, so element-wise multiplication. And in the end, we add these two values that we obtain to obtain the new hidden state. Now let's discuss a little bit about a comparison between the LSTM and the GRU. So the first one is that in the LSTM, you have like two states, the, the cell state and the hidden state that you transfer from one step to another. While in the gate recurrent unit, you have only the hidden state. This one, the gate recurrent unit is more similar in this way to the recurrent uh, neural networks. But also you have to observe that uh, in the LSTM case, we have like three gates, the forget gate, input gate, and the output gate, which basically means like four neural networks. While in the gated recurrent unit, we have only two gates, the reset gate and the update gate, which corresponds to three neural networks. So basically in the gated recurrent uh, unit case, we have like faster computation due to the reduced number of gates here. But also I've seen like people arguing that uh, because you have like three gates in the long short term memory, you can capture like longer like uh, correlations in the sequence. Uh, but in practice, I've seen them both work quite well, I didn't see like many differences between like the performance of one and the other. With all this being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Uh, and I hope that you got a better understanding of how the gate recurrent unit works. And if you like this video, please leave a like to it and maybe subscribe to this channel. It would help me a lot. And until next time, I wish you to have a great time and see you. Bye bye.